Nami is a name that is synonymous with speed and power. Nami is a smaller scooter company, but makes one of the world's most famous scooters, the Nami Burn E. Their flagship model, the Burn E2 Max, broke almost every performance record in our database and is my personal favorite scooter ever. The Burn E2 Max is a premium scooter, but its premium price puts it outside of some people's budget. The Burn E2 base model has similar acceleration, less top speed, and costs a lot less, but it's still a 100 pound scooter, and for some riders, that's hard to live with. This is why the Klima is so exciting. All the passion, design, and rigorous testing we've come to expect from NAMI plugged into a new, more portable form factor and at a more approachable price sounds like a recipe for success. And man, did they deliver. I love everything about it from its rugged, sporty design to its high quality components to its neck snapping acceleration. The Klima comes in two different versions and I'll say now for what this scooter offers, the base model is an absolute steal at $2,300. We tested the $2,800 max version of the Klima with the larger 30 amp hour battery, which just has an effect on the range, but otherwise the two versions are basically identical. We will note any differences between the two versions where applicable though. Let's jump right in. The Klima rides on grippy 10 inch tubeless pneumatic street tires with a nice rounded cornering friendly profile. These tires combined with the adjustable hydraulic coil suspension makes for one of the most comfortable electric scooters I've ever ridden. The dial on the suspension adjusts the rebound letting you determine how quickly the suspension decompresses. You can also adjust the preload by tightening the collars on the bottom of the shocks. The suspension is adjusted pretty well out of the box so I would suggest starting there and tweaking things to your liking after getting a feel for the scooter. The Klima continues Nami's trend of unique welded tubular frame scooters and I think it looks awesome. The all matte black styling gives it a very Batman-esque feel. I was tempted to call this a mini Burn E for this review, but the word mini would imply a small cramped cockpit and riding platform and that's not the case at all. The deck length is average at 18 inches and at first the deck tail looks a little short. However, I was pleasantly surprised at how comfortably I could position my feet and how much space I felt like I had on the platform. I think that this is due to the distance the platform is positioned back from the handlebars. This makes for good ergonomics. I didn't feel pressed up against the cockpit and I naturally settled into a comfortable riding position. The cockpit has a nice wide set of 700 millimeter handlebars and a pair of locking grips with a cool angular texture that is comfortable and grippy. The height from deck to handlebars is nice and high at 42 inches, perfect even for taller riders. The stem clamp is quick release style with one large folding leaf that locks the stem collar in place. This larger lever is easier to open and close and it keeps the stem locked in place with no wiggle or play. All the dimensions and design choices come together so nicely, almost like they were custom made for me. Handling, ergonomics, and overall ride feel makes this scooter a dream. The bright center mounted color display is large and easy to read in sunlight. You get all the relevant information and four different riding modes with the option to turn on a turbo setting in the P settings for a 12% boost in power. To fully activate the turbo mode, you need to hold the plus button for a second while the scooter is moving. On will appear under the turbo icon when it's active. The throttle is a thumb throttle, but it's the horizontal actuating style rather than the vertical actuating style you see on most lower priced scooters. It still has the infamous dead zone at the beginning of travel, but I've actually come to really like this style of throttle and am not bothered by the dead zone as much anymore. It's more intuitive to use than a trigger throttle for most riders and gives you better control over acceleration than other style of thumb throttles. The sine wave controllers also help a lot with speed control and smooth acceleration and pair well with this thumb throttle. The display controls and a fairly standard set of light and horn controls round out the cockpit. You get turn signals as well, which seems to be pretty standard for scooters at this price point. Twin 1000 watt motors, 60 volt battery, and twin 40 amp sine wave controller sounds like a recipe for a beast of a scooter. So let's jump right into the stuff that you no doubt want to know the most. How fast does the Klima actually go? Well, record breaking max speed isn't what the scooter's all about, but it's ESG verified top speed of 41.6 miles an hour is still probably faster than you could really ever want to go on 10 inch wheels. The area where the Klima shines is in its acceleration and general quickness and agility. Like this scooter is quick, quick. How quick? Well, the Klima gets up to 30 miles an hour in less than five seconds. 
If that number means nothing to you, let me say that the list of scooters with sub five seconds zero to 30s is very short. This gets to 30 miles an hour as quickly as the Dualtron Storm, which cost two times more than the base Klima. The Storm was a scooter that had me laughing like a little kid at how fast and fun it was, and the Klima delivers that same experience. Any scooter at this price point tends to get compared to the VSET 10 Plus when talking about acceleration numbers. For a long time, the 10 Plus was the fastest in class at 30 miles an hour, but not anymore. All hail the new acceleration king, the Klima. Its hill climb was also impressive at 7.7 .7 seconds, on par or better than everything in its class. Sometimes a lack of bike lane or sidewalk will force you to ride with traffic, and the scooter has absolutely zero problems doing that. In fact, off the line, the Klima accelerated quicker than any traffic I had to deal with while I was riding around. The Logan brand hydraulic brakes are more than up to the task of bringing the scooter to a stop in a timely manner, performing excellently in our braking test. From 15 miles an hour, the Klima stopped in less than 10 feet, making it one of the best braking scooters we've ever tested. All of us here at ESG agree that the Logan brakes are a significant upgrade over Zoom and Nut, other brands we often see on scooters in this class. The impressive braking distance is also a complement to the tires on this scooter, which have just as much to do with the stopping power as the brakes. For the majority of my testing, including the braking test, I had the regen braking set to zero. Out of the box, the regen is set to one out of five, which is the minimum, but even at the minimum, I felt the electronic braking was just a little too aggressive. The disc brakes by themselves offer plenty of stopping power and are more progressive, allowing light braking without yanking the scooter backwards. As I mentioned at the beginning, the suspension feels amazing, and once I had it dialed to the rebound setting I like, it just ate up every bump and pothole I encountered. I would actually speed up to hit speed bumps because of how good the suspension felt. The Klima actually has an edge over its older brother, the Burn E, in the nimbleness category. The Burn E can feel a bit sluggish when cornering due to its weight and size, but the Klima doesn't have that issue at all. The lower weight, smaller wheels, and sine wave controllers of the Klima mean that the speed and handling are precise and responsive, allowing the scooter to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge around corners, along paths, and through traffic. Calling this scooter fun is like calling the universe big. It's true, but it just doesn't do it justice. In our range test, riding aggressively in turbo mode, the larger 30 amp hour battery version of the Klima that we tested got exactly 25 miles of range. You could easily get 30 miles or more on a full battery with just slightly more conservative riding or by not using the turbo mode. Unless you really need the extra range or want LG batteries, saving $600 by getting the 25 amp hour battery seems like a great way to go. The large bright headlight is mounted high on the stem giving you good visibility visibility of the road and making you more visible to cars while riding at night. I like the headlight from a design standpoint as well as it gives the cockpit that signature NAMI look. The IP55 rating is nice and makes rain riding possible if you decide to get this scooter for a commute or for errand running. I do have a few nitpicky critiques of it though. First, the back tail light feels unfinished and exposed, like they forgot to add a cover or something over this LED strip. It does match up with NAMI's rugged, sporty feel they like to go for though. All the NAMI scooters do this, but the double rear fender feels like a weird afterthought. The two fenders don't fit together in a natural way. I'd rather not get water up my back than ride without the second fender though, and again, it fits Nami's aesthetic in a way. The Klima doesn't have a deck latch for securing the handlebars when they're folded down. One of the big appeals of this scooter is that it's somewhat portable compared to the Burn E, weighing 20 pounds lighter. So having a deck latch would make a lot of sense. You aren't going to be picking up this scooter by the stem when folded, but having the handlebars flopping around awkwardly when loading a car or walking upstairs is quite annoying. The deck tail also doesn't give you a great place to grab the scooter when lifting it up. All these are just small fish negatives in a huge sea of positives though. So here are the pros and cons of the Klima. Best in class acceleration, immaculate ride feel thanks to the top end suspension, and everything that makes the Bernie amazing in a smaller, lighter package. The cons are the rear lights and the rear fender design feels a bit unfinished, and it's awkward to move because of no deck latch and the small deck tail. You know it's a good scooter when thinking of cons is like trying to scrape the last bit of peanut butter out of the bottom of a jar with a fork. Here are some alternatives to consider if you're shopping for something in this price range. The Roadrunner RS5 Plus is priced close to the base Klima and has an almost identical top speed. 
The RS5 Plus has a bit more riding platform space and a removable battery, a feature you can only find on this scooter. However, the Klima has an edge in the other performance categories like acceleration and braking distance. The Cabo Wolf Warrior XGT offers dual stem construction, more usable deck space, and a higher top speed than the Klima, but lacks the impressive fully adjustable suspension. The Klima also beats the Wolf Warrior XGT to 30 miles an hour by almost a full second. And while we are looking at other scooters, let's quickly look at the difference between the Klima Max and the Burn E2 base model because they are as close in price as only a few hundred dollars, depending on sales. The Burn E2 gives you a jump in acceleration, top speed, and range, but besides being less expensive, the Klima offers a more compact package and better overall ride control. If you need to carry your scooter upstairs on a daily basis and you want the performance that NAMI is known for, then the Klima is your best friend. NAMI has done an amazing job of creating a scooter that has the top tier performance and ride feel of their flagship e-scooter and packing it all into a smaller, lighter, and less expensive package. There is literally not a single scooter currently on the market that beats the Klima for acceleration at its base price of $2,300. So if you want an adrenaline rush on a budget, this is the scooter for you. It's good range and extremely comfortable ride feel also make it a great commuting option. NAMI really did it again and made one of my favorite scooters I've ever tested. You can check out the Klima at the link in the description and any discount codes will be found down there as well. I'm Mitchell with Electric Scooter Guide and I'll see you in the next one.